lovely to see you again. You too. On this, uh, obviously, a, a lovely week for, for yourself and for everyone involved in football. Um, what does the Rainbow Laces campaign mean to you and um, what do the Laces stand for? Um, I think overall it's a symbol of acceptance and inclusion and it's representation in what has historically been a really underrepresented field. Um, and I think, you know, I saw on Twitter when it was announced about the laces, some of the comments saying it's meaningless and it's nonsense. And I actually think that comes from a position of privilege in that the people that say that they've never personally needed that symbol, so they don't understand the value or appreciate the, the meaning of it. Yeah. But I think that for those who need it, it really does mean a lot. And, um, you know, an example is my day job is a university lecturer. A couple of years ago, they, I had a rainbow lanyard, and at the end of the lecture, the, a young lad came down and, um, you know, first year, first time living away from home, first time at university, really anxious about settling in, and as part of that, he came out to me, and he was shaking and stumbling and getting his, trying to get his words out, but obviously in the moment, I just supported him, but then later on, we reflected on it, and he said it was the lanyard. He said that he'd saw the lanyard, and he knew that he could trust me with that information and that he knew that I wouldn't judge him and that I would accept him. And so that, for me, whether it's laces or a lanyard or a badge, for the people who need it the most, it is massively important and it does hold a lot of meaning and value. That's, am that's amazing and, you know, going further on that, I think, you know, the same could be said when I've, you know, we've had the Black Lives Matter and mm -hmm. the kneeling and you get, you know, some fans in stadiums still booing. Um, comments on Twitter, yeah. and you think you don't understand what this what this is for. You might mm -hmm. think it's meaningless, but to someone, whether it's one person or a, a group of people, it means everything. And you know, like you said, that one story you just give there, I think it's a powerful example of what these campaigns can do for the people that need it the most. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So more than eighty percent of LGBTQ plus community of experienced homophobic abuse at sport and in a sporting environment have you ever heard it yourself and came across it yeah I, I think unfortunately most people who have been to a sporting um, event have heard it um, it's it's always disappointing it makes me angry um, it creates a really hostile environment and I think it spoils it for everyone when you hear things like that and I also think when you hear it in the stands there's almost like an additional layer of rejection and betrayal when it comes from your own fans because there's that element of we're here wearing the same shirt cheering on the same team these are supposed to be your people this is your in-group you share an identity with these as fans and then to hear them say you know discriminatory abuse that is even more disappointing and, and upsetting because like I said they should have your back yeah. um, and I think that you know, it's it's a real tough one to be in that position where you hear it because it's then like, do you say something? Do you risk your own personal safety? And then you have that conflict of feeling like, well, is my silence compliance? You know, am I colluding with them by not calling it out there and then? And, um, you know, I think when you hear people say like, oh, you know, why bring politics into football? And why why don't we just make it about the football? But it's already in football. The minute that somebody does like a homophobic or a racist chant, they bring it into football. It's not the LGBT community saying, you know, we want to bring it into football. Yeah. It is there. Like the moment somebody attaches like a slur or a derogatory jibe about somebody's identity, that is what makes it personal and no longer about the football. Yeah. So, you know, you see <clears throat> You see that in the stands, and you think, well, you can you can criticise somebody's performance. You can in any sport in football, without making a comment about their sexuality or the colour of their skin. The moment that that gets added on in abuse in the stands or on social media, it's like, well, we're not we're not on football anymore. We're in that other stuff. And I think like fans and clubs, just laying out their boundaries and saying we're not going to stand for that anymore, and we don't want that in football. And actually, we do want to get the football but in order to do that we need to recognize the problems that are in it and I think whether that is rainbow laces a, a captain's armband taking a knee these are all ways of clubs saying we want it out and I think that um, you know 
in order to get it out, I think first some work needs to be done to acknowledge it's there in the first place. Wow. I've never even thought of it like, like how you're saying mm -hmm. about, because I've heard a lot of people say, oh, politics and football, mm -hmm. um, and for you to say that, well, it's already in. Mm -hmm. I've never actually sat back and thought, so sometimes you think, oh, maybe the whole, you know, the taking the knee thing's mm -hmm. gone on a bit too long mm -hmm. and people saying, oh, we'll just get back to the football. But like you said, how can you get back to something when it's been taken past mm -hmm. that line? Like, you know, I've had a lot of abuse about my performances, which, listen, I hold my hands up and I don't mind. You can take that as an athlete, of course, because that's what you're on the pitch to do. You're on the pitch to play. Yeah. But as soon as they add those layers, that yeah. is not about football. And that's what these campaigns are for. But yeah. yes, we all want to get back to football. We're not saying we don't agree with that. But in order to do that, we need to acknowledge and take a stance and say, well, that other stuff we're not going to we're accept not going to accept anymore. So how important is it for members of the LGBTQ plus community to see players wearing the rainbow laces or the captains wearing a rainbow armband? Um, I think it's really important for, for not just the community but wider really. I think it's important for the LGBTQ community because again it's that representation, um, that's, is there's that allyship that they're welcome. Um, so you might have an LGBT kid that's seeing their favourite players and their role models with laces and they think, ah, oh, that's, that's like me, so they can resonate with it. But I also think it's important for those who aren't part of the community to see allies and ambassadors to think, well, you know, if you think of like young impressionable children, if they're seeing their role model who they love and they look up to wearing those laces and they might think, well, they're not that way um, and they're still supporting it. So I, I think it's equally important for the members of the community and not the community because something can be taken and a message can be taken f from it for, for whatever, however you identify. How important is it for a campaign like this just weeks before the World Cup's due to be staged in Qatar? Um, I think that's a huge, huge topic. I think this campaign in particular sits almost like an umbrella of wider human rights issues that we're seeing in Qatar. So, um, yeah, it would be probably a full podcast to, to cover that one. But I think if we take it in isolation, again, when you look at social media and the reaction that when they said Harry Kane was going to wear the, the armband, you, you got a lot of, um, what is the point? You either need to boycott it or, you know, not bother at all. And I think that's really extreme all or nothing way of thinking that you either boycott the whole thing or do nothing. And I think that actually control your controllables and that kind of circle of influence, what can we control? And yes, it would be a really powerful message on a systemic level and a macro level to boycott the, the World Cup, but that's clearly not going to happen. So actually, if you think about individual influence, so what can one person do, Harry Kane or whoever, as, yeah. as a captain wearing an armband, he can connect with human beings on, a, on an individual level. So whether that is, we talked about it earlier, whether that's one LGBT footballer who goes to that World Cup or whether and it's illegal in their country or whether it's one fan in the stadium that it's illegal in that country and they're seeing, uh, you know, the leader of that country's team with an armband on or if it's someone watching on the telly, an LGBT person who is, is scared to live who they are authentically, that is powerful yeah. and again it's about not reducing the meaning of something because somebody doesn't think it's big enough for who needs that symbol, that will be massive. And um, Tom Daly recently did a, um, a documentary on being illegal in different countries. And what he did um, in the, the end of the, what was it, the, the Olympic, he carried the torch and he had um, rainbow flags. And he um, interviewed athletes who had grown up where it was illegal to be gay. And he asked them, like, what does this, what does this flag mean? And they were in tears and they were like, if I'd have seen this as a child, um, this would have been a symbol, for, a symbol of hope for me, that, that I can exist, that, that type of thing. And I think that, again, whether it's laces, whether it's a flag, whether it's an armband, whether it's taking a knee, it's, it's something that will speak volumes for the right people who need it. So I don't think we need to be doing those huge massive comparisons of boycott it or do nothing those little things on an individual level will will work and it will 
hold a lot of value for some people. Yeah, I think I echo that 100%. I think it's, you know, what you've said there is amazing. Um, Adidas, actually, I think, are sponsoring, obviously, got the ball and mm -hmm. the World Cup balls. I'm not, they haven't named it Rainbow, you know, Rainbow Ball or anything, mm -hmm. but the colours are very, yeah. very symbolic. Mm -hmm. The boots that they've got for the World Cup, I've actually got them. So my rainbow laces are going to look even better. Amazing, which, yeah. <laughs> which is always good. It's always yeah. good. nice to look good. Well, I think you look good anyway. Um, <laughs> but I think the players will go in and wearing very brightly coloured boots, like I said, almost echoing a rainbow, the mm. ball. Like you said, I think them symbols will be shown across the whole world and mm -hmm. in places where, you know, it is illegal. Like you said, if it helps a few people that have felt oppressed and uncomfortable in who they really are mm -hmm. and it makes them you know kind of flower into the person that they know they are want to be and should allow to be then you know I think it's a, it's a massive thing and like you said it doesn't need to be an all or nothing approach it can be you know small things done that can have a massive impact across a, a wide range of people mm -hmm. and we may never know the impact of it um, you know that on that individual level so again it's really difficult to measure the impact of that but I think it's those individual stories and voices that come out in like the Tom Daly documentary or you know that example of my student earlier on that 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 can be life or death and what is more important than that than and somebody wearing an armband that might save someone somewhere who is really really in a low place um, that is surely enough how important is it that players like Josh Cavallo and Jake Daniels have come out? I think it's really important. I think it goes back to the age-old saying of, you know, you can't be it if you can't see it. Um, and I think that, you know, it is important because there might be really, really talented young players in, say, academies who they don't have that role model and they might be trying to figure themselves out at that kind of really vulnerable age and they might think well I want to be a footballer but I, I know that I'm gay and you can't be both because we don't have any of those and or making them feel like they have to hide one part of themselves in order to pursue what they love in football so I think having those role models um, is really important I think it's incredibly brave for them to do that because knowing that the issues that there still is around homophobia in in sport and um, they've put themselves out there and I think um, you know there will be there'll be LGBT current players if not younger players that will be keeping a really close eye on how they're treated in the media so I have no doubt that they will be having a look at the comment section of their posts and having a look at their Twitter apps or whatever to kind of see almost testing the waters of how are they being responded to how are, are people supporting them how much abuse are they getting because that is ultimately helping them decide is it safe to come out and unfortunately although them two have done massive steps in, in coming out we're, we're still not seeing that being followed up um, and I but I think they've done the really difficult thing of, of taking those first steps um, and I hope that that opens up possibilities for talented young players that we don't lose in the system because they feel like they can't be that or they can't make it to the top because of who they are. How sad is it that we're having this conversation yeah. in 2022 about young people that love the game that we both love, yeah. that may fall away and never play football professionally because they've got to make a choice between being who they are yeah. or oppressing who they are really and hiding it so that they can play a game that they love like what sort of kind of what, what choice is that to have yeah. surely it shouldn't be sure <laughs> it's, it it's blows horrible. my mind yeah that that's, yeah and you know I've never really sat and thought you know about kind of you know you've got that's kind of the choice you've got but mm. why should you have to make a choice you should be able to be who you are and play football just like I'm able to do, be who I am, just like yeah. you are. Yeah. What, I don't... Yeah, it makes me so sad to think that that is something that they could be grappling with. and Or if they are um, LGBT and they can't put 100% into everything because there's still that element of, what if I get found out? What if somebody outs me? They're constantly vigilant for 
protecting this part of themselves. So again, how imagine if they could just perform, where if they could be free from that, mm. like you would unlock more potential because they're not giving energy to hide in. What more would you like to see football do to allow people to be themselves and inc more inclusive for the LGBTQ plus community? Um, I think listen to the fans with that experience. So, um, you know, they are experts by experience of being football fans in, in these spaces. Um, and what we have at Shrewsbury Town, which is really amazing, is a group called Salop for All. And I sit on that for um, that group as like the women's team representative. But through that, we have um, like a disability group and we've got um, Proud Salopians, which, which is an amazing LGBT group that we've got here. Um, we've got like a women, uh, women's fans representative. And again, it's just giving a platform and giving a voice to the minority groups in that they have a different experience. They experience the, the football environment differently because every time they go there, there is there is a higher chance that there may be abuse of some sort, whether, again, whether that's sexist, racist, homophobic. So they do experience football differently. And I think harnessing their experience and their knowledge and their love of the team is going to help you understand how to better serve them and support them. Yeah. So I don't think it's um, necessarily for me to list off a load of things to do around inclusion. It's around saying to clubs, you have experts by experience in your club give them the space and authentically listen to them rather than ticking a box or being tokenistic they will have ideas of how they best want to be integrated and feel more part of the club and you just need to facilitate a space in order to allow them to do that your turn my turn to ask the question so as our very first shrewsbury town ambassador for the rainbow laces campaign and the team ally what does this campaign mean to you it's, it's massive to me on, and to be honest it's a real privilege to be a part of something and to be asked to do it is you know amazing I'm massive on equality um, you know being a, a man of you know mixed race of you know my mom's white and my dad was black um, I feel like I've seen the hatred towards you know I've had it myself uh, in terms of the racism and I think football is a game that I've always loved you know I can't hide being who I am and I think it's a it's a massive shame that people are still having to hide who they are, but for their sex sexuality or just for them loving loving football, but not being able to be themselves. And um, I just want to support in any way I can to help people understand that football is for everyone. It should never be about sex, race, religion, sexuality. It should just be you support your team or you want to play football, you love football. And as you you know said earlier about bringing politics into football, if people didn't say these things or didn't have these views on you know, the LGBTQ plus community or on a different race or religion or you know, the color of someone's skin, we wouldn't have these conversations, we wouldn't have these campaigns because they wouldn't be necessary. Mm -hmm. um, and I think if I can help it in any way I can, and you know, even like you said, if it can help one person that's a Shrewsbury fan or a, you know, a young person that's not quite sure whether they want to, you know, open up and say that they're they're gay or they're lesbian or, you know, if I if they see me doing it on a Saturday and showing that I'm, you know, supporting the campaign, you know, if I can help one person, as you said, I may never find out, but I don't need to find out. It's not about, you know, a, a pat on the back or gratification. It's about letting people be who they want to be, enjoy football for what it is. Amazing. I think it's such a huge privilege to have you because you aren't doing this for the wrong reasons, to tick a box or, you know, like to, to further your own, look how good I am. You genuinely are invested in this quest for inclusion and equality and I think you're the perfect person. Thank you very much. Lovely chatting to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We all deserve a round of applause. We do. That we was really. so good. I enjoyed it. Yeah. You, Give me a big look. No, yeah. you were so good. You were really good. Yeah, get a look on camera, oh. man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm having it on my tiptoes. Should we get tiptoes? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not even big. I know. I'm just small. Oh, no. Look, these are the small ones. This is the shiny oh. one. Yeah. No, see, that needs some, that needs some change, doesn't it?